Hello everyone, today we're going to go over H2, use tables and graphs to identify patterns about kinetic energy. So before we get started, I want to just go over the concept of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has due to its motion. So um, the formula for kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared where m is mass typically in kilograms, and v is velocity in meters per second. Now, um, let's go over some quick conceptual parts about kinetic energy. So first of all, the greater the object's mass, the greater its kinetic energy, and the greater its velocity also will result in have it having greater kinetic energy. Uh, just also be aware that based off the formula, velocity has a greater effect on kinetic energy compared to the object's mass if they both increase at the same rate. Now, uh, moving on to some pictures just to make sure we got this idea. So which object has the greater kinetic energy? The human right here running or the little dog here on the bottom and the winner goes to the human that man is definitely more massive than the dog moving on to the second question assuming that both cars have the same mass which one has greater kinetic energy uh, the winner would go to the blue car on the bottom right screen because assuming they have the same mass this one is definitely moving way faster than the car on the top now, before we start the practice problems, uh, I just want you to be aware that for H2, stage one, you don't actually need to know the formula or the concept of kinetic energy in order to uh, figure things out. Uh, for stage two, just knowing the idea of the formula in the back of your head could be helpful. But for stage one, you're good to go. So let's get this started. The black motorcycle's mass is blank compared to the red motorcycle's mass, so all you're doing in this stage is comparing the object's masses using that table. So it's really just table interpretation. So black motorcycle's mass is 191, red motorcycle's mass is 382, so the red motorcycle's mass is going to be half that of the red one. Uh, motorcycle speed, they're both at 4 meters per second, so they have the same speed oops, equal to, and then black motorcycle's kinetic energy uh, looks like it's also going to be half that at a red motorcycle's kinetic energy. So once again, knowing the idea of it is nice, but you can technically get away without knowing <laughs> the formula at all, which I think is kind of hilarious. All right, moving on to the next one. So uh, acorn's mass compared to the patch's mass, they're both exactly the same. Next one, acorn speed is roughly half of that, so half of patch speed. And then you'll notice that the kinetic energy as a result looks like it quadrupled actually because the velocity has increased by two. So uh, acorn's kinetic energy is actually one fourth that of the patch's kinetic energy. All right, next one, Ariel's mass is equal to Mara's mass. Uh, aerial speed this time is actually double that of Mara's mass. Aerial's kinetic energy as a result looks like it increased by a factor of four. All right, we'll do one more. Uh, nickel's mass is in this case a double the penny's mass. Nickel's speed in both examples is the same. And then kinetic energy looks like it has doubled. So once again, Velocity has a way higher impact on the overall kinetic energy than the mass does. Mass got doubled, kinetic energy doubled. But in the previous examples, the velocities doubled and then the kinetic energy ended up quadrupling. Good thing to keep in mind. Okay, moving on to stage two. So uh, let's just make sure you're aware of the slight gimmicky nature of stage two. So beware, it says if one object is moving at two times the speed, then the object has four times kinetic energy. So whenever you see the speed here, you should see the kinetic energy be a value at about four times of it, just so you are aware that the change should be four times. So uh, let's do an example right here. Uh, at 11, 
meters per second. The speed, the energy is three. Cool, three joules. All right, so if the speed doubles, we would assume that the energy would quadruple to 12. So at 22, the energy quadruple to 12. So I would pick this graph here. Just as a heads up, at 11 speed, 11 meters per second, the energy is nine. Therefore, it should quadruple to 36. However, at 22 meters per second, which is double, you get uh, 18. Okay, so just be aware you do need to read the graphs a little carefully on this one to make sure you get them right. All right, this one, once again, two times the mass of a second object results in two times the kinetic energy. So once again, you would expect that if the mass doubles, then the kinetic energy should have doubled. So we're looking at one to two, one to two, one to two, one to two. So from one, it looks like this is uh, three joules, and then at two, looks like it's uh, six joules. So this looks like it doubled. So this would be a good candidate. Here it looks like one energy is, uh, or one <laughs> one kilogram is a uh, three joules, and then two kilograms looks like it increased all the way to twelve. So this is quadrupling, and this wouldn't be right. Uh, here, once again, you can just tell it's not going to uh, double properly. The thing is decreasing overall on the slope. Uh, this one here, 1 starts at 0, then 2 starts at 12, and then, yeah, this one is just odd. <laughs> you start from 0 to 12, that's, that's kind of odd, so I would go with this one here. All right, uh, this one once again, two times the speed. Whenever the speed doubles, the overall energy would quadruple. So you would probably pick this one. If I, if, even if I didn't read it from the get-go, I would pick this one because that's most likely what you would choose to get a quadrupling effect. Um, let's see, two meters per second to six joules. So if it doubles, you would expect 24. So for four meters per second, you would then go to 24. So I would pick that. Uh, once again, this one I think is only doubling. This is decreasing and so is that. So both of these would not be good. All right, and then we'll just do one more. Uh, once again, two times the mass results in two times the energy. So I would probably pick this from the get-go even if I didn't look at it, but just to be sure, four and eight goes to eight and 32. This is a quadrupling effect. Uh, this one is the same thing, but in reverse, it's actually having the energy. So it's like 4 to 4, no, 4 to 48 going to 8 and 24. So this is half, and this is gradually a decrease as well. So these both would not be correct because it's going down, but this one's going up. Bam. And there you go. Uh, hopefully that information helped, and hopefully uh, get the idea of how to tackle IXL. H2.